let's have a little chat about plant adaptations. Now, uh, plants have an issue. They can't walk. Much as they want to, they can't walk. Which means that they don't have the ability to move around to find their resources. They've had to develop a lot of creative ways to get or hang on to the resources that they do need when the resources come to them. So let's talk about three things that plants need. First thing that plants need is water. Um, everything needs water that's alive needs water for its cells. Um, and plants are no different. But the thing is that plants, they can't just get up and go get a drink when they need a drink. So they have roots that dig far into the earth to find the water. But in the desert, there isn't even that much water in the ground. So because of that, desert plants have some really cool specific adaptations to be able to survive. So here is a cactus. This is kind of my awesome cartoon drawing of a saguaro, if you will, native to our lovely land here in Arizona. And the cactus, if we do a cross section here, it would look kind of zigzaggy like this. But its body is super spongy so that when it does rain, it can absorb tons of water and then its body winds up getting like fatter and expanding to hold all that water. Um, now, once the water is inside of the cactus, it has two more things that help it keep the water inside. The first one is the needles or spines. Most plants have leaves where the whole bottom side of the leaf is colored with a ton of holes. But cactus spines only have one hole in the very end to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen, which means there's only one hole in the end to get water, to, to lose water out of, whereas a leaf loses water out of the entire bottom side because it had little holes all over the place. Um, another thing is that the cactus is coated with a waxy type substance. And this wax seals the water in to the cactus so that it doesn't just evaporate out of its body. So you can see here, I have my little succulent friend in my classroom, and it has a waxy exterior to hold water in. So you don't have to water succulents as often. Um, so cactuses have lots of cool adaptations to help them to survive in the desert. Now, plants also need sun. They need water and they need sun. Um, and if you think about grass, Grass needs, you know, the sun to grow and it needs water from the clouds in the sky is how it would naturally get water. But sometimes there just isn't uh, enough water to go around or enough sun or it gets really cold. And plants have a problem because they can't get up and move. Plants can't migrate. So what they do is go dormant. And dormancy is kind of like plant hibernation where they go into standby until the conditions are more suitable for them to be able to grow appropriately. So if you live in an area of the country that has leafy trees, then you might have noticed that there are certain seasons when those leafy trees turn a different color and then fall to the ground, i.e. fall. And then you're just left with empty branches. The tree is not dead, it's gone dormant because it's not enough sun, and it's not enough water and not enough heat for the tree to be able to survive through the winter. Grass will do the same thing. Grass will go yellow. It's not dead, it's dormant. And as soon as it gets enough sun, warmth, and water, the temperature gets to be correct, then it will start growing into grass again. So dormant things are just trying to survive the winter the way that a hibernating squirrel would survive the winter because they aren't able to move around. The third thing that plants need to do is they need to reproduce. So here's some petals on a flower, and this is the female part of the flower called the ovum. Inside of the ovum, just like in female um, animals, there are in ovaries, there are eggs. Now, up there at the top is where the nectar is found, and that's going to come in to be important here momentarily. Then there's these little things called anthers that hold the pollen, and oftentimes those are going to be below the... Um, nectar so that plants don't pollinate themselves. So here's our friend the bee, one of the best mutual relationships that exists. And the bee comes over and eats the nectar and the pollen attaches to his body. 
And then he's going to fly over to another flower. And when he's eating the nectar off of the other flower, um, he's going to drop some of this pollen off and then pick up some more pollen off of this flower. And then this bee over here got some pollen from this flower and he flew over here. And when he was drinking nectar, he dropped some pollen um, over here. And bees just cruise around dropping pollen off at flowers. That pollen cruises down and will fertilize one egg. One pollen, one egg. And then that egg becomes a seed. Because a fertilized plant egg is a seed. A fertilized animal egg starts to grow into, you know, it's a full-on animal. But um, more and more pollen comes on more and more bees, and they drop that pollen, and it travels down until all of those eggs have been fertilized. And once all of those eggs have been fertilized, it's a signal to the plant that it doesn't need the flower anymore. Um, and then it starts to drop the petals and drop those anthers. And what you're left with is the beginning of a fruit. And then the plant adds more and more sugar to the outside of that fruit to encase it. And boom, you get a delicious little fruit. So the flesh around the seeds protect the seeds. Um, and when the fruit is ripe, it will either be picked by an animal that will pick it off, or it will just fall off. And we are left with this fruit. But here's the problem. You can't just have all of the plants just drop right below the parent tree. They need to disperse. So, here's an apple tree, do, 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 apple tree. And the apple tree cannot move to plant its babies all around the world because it can't move. We established out the plants. So, what is the plant to do? It makes apples. So, it drops apples on the ground and it has apples in the tree. And all of the apple trees can't grow right under that parent tree, like we just said. Otherwise, they wouldn't get enough sun, and then everybody would die, and it would be really sad. See, they're going to try to grow, but then the parent tree is going to shade them, and nothing good comes from that, and then all the trees are going to die. There's just not enough space. There's not enough sun. So the seeds need to spread out, but the apples can't walk, and the tree can't walk. So let's try this again, knowing that they can't walk and they can't all grow underneath of the parent. The plants use animals. They use us, the plants do. They use us to spread their babies all over the world. So along comes some kind of animal, I, I think a raccoon. We're going to call this a raccoon. And the raccoon's like, yum, I love apples. So the raccoon eats up all these apples, and then it moves away. And a day later, the raccoon's hanging out, and it drops the apple remains and the seeds in a glorious pile of fertilizer. Then the seeds inside of there start growing into a plant because that poop actually has everything that the seeds need to be able to grow. And so then another apple tree can grow away from where the parents were because it got dropped in this glorious pile of fertilizer. So the plants eating the fruit, or sorry, the animals eating the fruit is actually beneficial to the plants because the plants wouldn't be able to grow without it. Another thing that plants will do is, let's say that you take your dog out for a walk. I know this is the best dog you've ever seen. And it gets like something stuck on it, like a burr or a cattail. Some of the seeds, like seeds, like in weeds, will stick to an animal's fur, or in our case, stick to our socks. And then we walk away and we shake it off, and then that plant is able to grow. Some plants use the wind to spread their seeds around. So here's a dandelion. It's all happy and yellow. The bees come around, pollinate it. Once all of the eggs have been fertilized, then it looks like that white puffy thing. But each one of those little white puffy things is actually a seed. And the wind comes along, and it blows those happy little umbrella seeds in the wind, and then they cruise over and make more dandelions. Some trees will use, or plants I should say, will use the water to disperse their seeds, like a palm tree. The seed of um, some of the palm trees are coconuts, and so they drop their coconut into the ocean, and then the ocean takes it away, 
and it lands in some faraway place and turns into a coconut tree. So many clever ways that plants get their stuff moved around. So you can see plants are just like us. They need water, just like we do. They have a need to reproduce so that they can make more of themselves and they're not the last ones of their population. And they need to disperse and spread out the same way that we humans do. But because they don't have legs, they've had to get creative with the way that they meet these needs um, because they can't walk. Or maybe that's just what they want us to think. Dun, dun, dun.